All right, let's do this one last time. All right, I don't want to waste too much of your time. I really don't want to talk about this. I said I was I was done with the situation, but you know what? Special exception because Mr. Beast finally fucking responded to all the allegations being thrown at him. But there were certain things that I didn't really think that he questioned too well or that he just didn't really question at all. The main thing that I found the most interesting when after I was done watching Oompaville's interview with Mr. Beast was the fact that he didn't really talk about Ava Tyson, which I feel like that's the most severe allegations that were being thrown around, especially earlier on, because Ava was being accused of SA, and they had all these private chat messages with some minors on Discord. They were just showing a lot of degeneracy. There was a lot of things going on about Ava Tyson a few, a few years ago that just was very questionable. One of the things that really confused me after I was done watching the video and then I've like talked with my friends about on Discord was how the fuck do you look at that poster that Ava Tyson had bought and hung on your wall and not question him at all about it? And and he says that he didn't know the artist, he didn't know who Shadman was, and yeah, sure, I'll give Mr. Beast the benefit of the doubt, like I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt for a lot of other stuff that he talks about in the interview, because maybe he was naive, maybe he was like he didn't really know what's going on, like the whole Delaware thing. He didn't really like answer a lot of stuff that was super important and pertinent about Delaware, about like what did he do afterwards when he found out that Delaware was a registered SO, a registered sex offender, but fair enough, he didn't do a background check because he was 19 years old, he was just starting up his company, it was only like a few people that he like really closely knew back in like high school whatever, give him the benefit of the doubt in, in regards to that, but what did he do afterwards we have no idea because he didn't question it, or he didn't say anything about it during the interview, but why didn't he question his fucking best friend about why he bought that poster? Because I'm not going to show the image, and if I do, I'm going to censor it, obviously. But if you look at the picture, if you look at the poster that he fucking bought from Shadman, you can very blatantly see that the person, the character that's in the, the poster that he bought is very obviously not supposed to be a character that's of age. And I already talked about it on, like, a Discord... Uh, not Discord thread. A Twitter thread with someone in replies on, like, Willie Mac's Twitter. And they kept trying to say stupid shit like, Oh, well, we didn't really know that the character was supposed to be underage or not because of, like, lack of context. And it's like, bro... Even without the lack of context, you can clearly fucking see that this character is not meant to be of age. You can very clearly see by the way that they're depicted and by the way that they're drawn. It's pretty fucking obvious. So the fact that Mr. Beast just doesn't question it at all was very strange to me just from this one instance because it shows just the the current level of Ava Tyson's degeneracy up in, until that point. And I feel like had Mr. Beast actually asked some questions about his best friend's sexual like preferences and interests, it would have saved a lot of fucking problems occurring later on down the road. And the stuff with Ava Tyson probably would never have fucking happened. So that's one thing. Um, he talks about the, the crypto stuff, which we already had saw previously from CoffeeZilla. CoffeeZilla talked about it a little bit, and basically the general consensus of that was you either want to believe that he did it or maybe he didn't do it because Mr. Beast himself also says that he had, like, a fun do everything for him. But it's kind of confusing because Mr. Beast kind of seems like the type of guy who's super into crypto, so it kind of seems unbelievable that he wouldn't really be knowing what the hell's going on with, like, his crypto wallet and stuff like that. So in my opinion, I think he might have a lot more involvement than what he's letting on, but maybe he actually doesn't. Maybe he's actually telling the truth. I don't know. I just have to trust him whether or not he's actually telling the truth or not. Is he? Is he not? I have no actual idea of whether or not he actually is or not. I just have to go on this like good faith argument and just assume that he's not lying to the that he's not lying to Umpavel. He's not lying to the audience. He's not lying to me. He's not lying to anyone else. Uh, he didn't really talk about Lakoya Hill. Which, if you watch Soggy's video, uh, Kara, the hiring manager over in Mr. Beast's company, talks about it a little bit. And they said that they had a third-party investigation look into that. And I guess they didn't find anything. She didn't really says she doesn't really say whether or not they actually found anything in regards to Lakoya Hill potentially assaulting his assistant. But apparently something happened, and his assistant felt uncomfortable enough of being around Lakoya Hill that. They kicked LaCoya Hill and put him into a completely different department with a different company. And then after that assistant left the company after around like a year after the allegations with LaCoya Hill came out, internally of course, uh, they just let LaCoya Hill back in. And I don't know if they gave him back the same position or not. I don't know if like they gave him a different position or not. I have no idea. But that sort of seems like something that should have been asked. And I don't know why Oompaville just didn't think about questioning that because it almost seems like that's kind of important and... I don't I don't know why he didn't really mention why he didn't really mention that at all. That's kind of weird. 
Um, there's one illegal lottery that was brought up that was potentially a scam. Good on Mr. Beast. He says that he's going to offer people a review if they feel like they've been scammed and they want a refund and blah, 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 blah. Uh, he shows, like, the annual report of, like, the Mr. Beast philanthropy company, uh, the reports of the Tony Chuckaloni thing that he that he's partnered with to, to get the cocoa beans and make his chocolate and stuff like that. Uh, there's a report that, uh, from Quinn Emanuel, who did the whole third-party investigations, uh, internally, and they looked through all the messages. I guess they didn't really find anything. Over, overall, I look at all this, I look at all this information, I look at what Mr. Beast is saying in an interview, and it just sort of feels like that he's leaving out a lot of, uh, un unanswered questions, right? There's a lot of things that could still be answered. Maybe we'll get some more answers down the road, but honestly, at this point, I just kind of want all this to kind of fucking just end and stop because it's just, I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted with talking about this. I was heavily debating myself last night about whether or not I actually wanted to talk about this, whether or not it was super important to make an update video about it. And well, here it is because I'm talking about it. And honestly, uh, like for real this time, I'm fucking done. This is the last time. No more. If there's more information, I'll probably make a community post at most. I'll probably update the, like the pinned comment or I'll make a pinned comment on this video and update people on like my thoughts about any other further information there is down the road. I honestly don't really know what else to say about the situation other than I'm glad that Mr. Beast finally said something, but it sort of feels like there, were, there was a lot of information that was either left out purposefully because of like legal reasons he probably couldn't say anything because he says that he's probably in the future planning on suing Dogpack 404. So plan to see uh, a, a lawsuit potentially, potentially go out in the future against Dogpack for, I'm assuming, slander or misinformation. Uh, yeah, honestly, I'm just glad that Mr. Beast finally said something. I wish he said something sooner. He even admits that he probably should have said something sooner, but, you know, here we are, I guess. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I don't have much else to say. Uh, leave, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I apologize for my voice. I probably was, uh, struggling a little bit throughout the entire video trying to speak because for the past couple of days, my voice has actually been kind of sore, but now it's starting to get back to normal. This is the first day that's where it's actually kind of back to... It's normalcy, as close to normalcy as it can get, of course. So, uh, anyways, that's pretty much it. I want to go ahead and give a shout-out to the channel members. So far, there's only one, and that's Pedro360. I really appreciate that. Please consider joining the memberships if you, if, you, if you do. I would really appreciate it. That would be amazing. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully, we're not talking about Mr. Beast. <laughs> anyways, yeah. I'll see you guys next one. I'm out. Peace. Let the